There he is. He did sneak in on us. Nick, what's going on? Well, uh, sell off, sell off. No, ah, is is, are they blaming Greece again? Is that what they do? It seems I like the, it seems like the media. They see a sell off. They don't know what to say, so they just cop out. Ah, oh, it's Greece. I, I did read a headline. Into, yeah, yeah, it crawled into. Yeah, it crawled into. Yeah, it crawled into the headlines again. Uh, some sort of. Uh, internal skirmishes, I think, uh, politically, I'm not sure. I don't know why they're freaked out about it. I mean, <clears throat> the QE in uh, in Europe uh, was not tied to the, the Greek situation. They kind of, like, secluded it. So the freakout over Greece is unwarranted. However, uh, a little set-off here has been, you know, set up for a while. And, uh, you know, the bull this year is a little different. I, I'd like to point this out. Let's get this out of the way. I see three bulls in the last three years. The bull in 13 was the snorting, drooling, incredibly strong by the F and dip with an <laughs> exclamation. It was an exclamation point after it. Uh, 2014 was by the F and dip with a question mark. It was maybe yes, maybe no. It was still a decent bull, but not raging. This bull here, I can't believe it's, it's this high. They're looking around it's like, I can't believe we're up here. So they're like uh, very hesitant, almost comedic hesitant looking. Bull. The hesitant bull. The hesitant bull. That's why I've been loading up on short positions, but with with a buffer. Meaning, I'm leaving I, every time I come here. I tell you, I'm shorting with credit call spreads way up, right? So high over the money. Uh, just collect some premium and wait for days like these, and you can book those premiums for a relatively easy exercise. Which stocks are you picking on there, Nick? I'm still picking on Priceline. Yeah. I collected about thirty dollars in premium by selling calls nice. way out in October, way over the money, and I mentioned those last week. I was uh, I was on, and I'm picking on the markets themselves. I sold some NDX way over the money, uh, yeah. way way out in time, kind of like I call them the ICBM trades, the intercontinental ballistic missiles, like long range missiles. I don't want to fight <laughs> the fight here. They wanted to get to new highs or recent highs. Hey, let them do it. Hey, uh, we're on with Nick Shaheen. He's a market fi maven and author of Create Incomes, Create Income with Option Spread. Nick, I didn't get a chance to email or tell you about this, but you kind of helped me out a little bit. And uh, oh. yeah, and uh, I don't know if I just got lucky or not, but um, I went in uh, to uh, O Rig here, Ocean Rig, uh, ahead of the earnings, uh, kind of looking uh, for a pop in the stock. And it got slammed. I was long the nine calls. This is back when it was trading 830, 840. And I really didn't have a chance to get out of them. And I didn't like it. So, and I couldn't get out of them because there were no bids. So I said, I whacked the seven and a halves. And I put the spread on for very little. But I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to recoup the premium you know, that I had paid for the $9 one. And, it, you know, it got down to a nickel. I bought it back. I'm not going to, you know, risk a nickel with this thing getting taken over. But I did have the great risk-reward ratio that you put on a lot. But, you know, here you're having a, you know, I, I turned a losing position into a scratch, you know, number yep. one. And number two, I used, you know, you used the time. You know, the thing sat still for a couple days. It came in. So there's a couple ways to use it. I don't know if I'd be uh, selling credit call spreads down here today off the open. But uh, no, no. you did teach me something. Well, that's good. That's, you know, managing risk. People forget that risk is not just the risk. Uh, you know, r they say, oh, I know what risk is. Most people miss it. Uh, the risk of how much money you're risking, that's the decision to be made right away. And then there's a risk of chances of success. Well, what's the likelihood of me losing money? And that's what you did. You lost money. You wanted to put your asset that be, to work, and that's how you did it. And then you bought it back. That's the important part. People leave it on for a nickel. That's the wrong thing to do. Yes, the nickels add up, but it only takes one messed up nickel that you leave unbought. And then it makes up for all of these other ones and all the headaches. So... The proper thing to do is to buy it back like you did. So good job. Okay, uh, let's talk about GoPro here. And uh, Brianna's asking about actually it, like the most shorted stock. And I know you set up some different scenarios in GoPro. What are you thinking down here at thirty-eight bucks? Well, I was months ago. I, I laid out this scenario that I said if this happens, uh, it, by this meaning some downside pressure and it can't find a bounce and it keeps setting lower highs and lower lows. It's headed down to the 30s, and um, I, and and right here the range has tightened up from being so wide about six months ago. You can look at it, the chart. I don't know what kind of chart you're showing, but right now I see a range between 35 and 42 ish. So it, it's 
most likely headed to 35, and if it does, it has a big decision to make. Well, now that the range is tightened, is it going to be 30 and lower because the story is done, or is it going to pop back to 50 based on the headline? Or it's, it has energy building by the shrinking of the, uh, the range, so it's going to decide to either break down and completely disappear off the news streams or boom, pop on some weird story. And if you say it's the most shorted stock, I did not look at the short interest, then, you know, the upside lottery ticket, if this market settles, is not a bad deal. I'm trying to go find the short interest here right now, Nick. I'll give that to you and see. I don't think it is that shorted, though. Um, it's short interest. Oh, yeah, it's 37%. Dang it. Yeah. Yeah. I so, beat you, uh, Branster. Uh, <laughs> <right>. 37. <laughs> oh, whoa, it is shorted. So there's always the potential for the squeeze in there. And if you so go, if I, if you go if, back, if I wanted to play a lottery ticket, and uh, after today's drubbing, if we do get a drubbing at the open, uh, if somebody wants to buy calls way out in the money and risk uh, give give yourself some time to be right on some potential pop somewhere, if you still believe in the story at all, uh, that's probably a good thing to do. But it's controlled money, like lottery size. You know, you put you set aside a few hundred bucks. Depends on your pocket. Um, a, a good chunk of money that you won't be too upset for losing part of. It's not a bad deal. Uh, another comment on that, uh, real quickly, insider selling. Remember when they hit the stock up in the 80s, and actually I think J.P. Morgan let the founders out because it was a charitable foundation, and they were right. able to let stock go, and that was over 80 bucks. So that you know, that's another key for insider selling. Brent, you got a comment on GoPro? Uh, nope. Just was listening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was looking at me, like giving me the cue. Uh, Rob Hood he always had, comes up with interesting charts here. And uh, Target. Now, I know it's not one of your, your momos that you like to follow, but uh, this wow, chart. Up. Yeah, what do you think? I mean, uh, you know, Dennis says don't short, you know, strong stocks. This is the definition of a strong stock. Give us a look at Target. Well, it, it's a phenomenal uh, trend for the last uh, since its pop on on uh, before earnings actually. Uh, what, what was when that, they dumped the Canadian stores? That's, that was the pop. We're gonna lose right. five billion in Canada. We're gonna close the Canadian shops, and they pop it in that pre market like five points yeah. that day. It's the market. This is good news that you're gonna lose five billion. I mean, that just shows you how much of a honey badger well, stock this has been. Well, here's my thought on it. Okay, I, it, if if you if you draw a linear regression line on this chart it's right now not too far from the line so it's not crazy levels what i don't like is these fast candles like you mentioned it earlier on another stock i can't tesoro i think or i can't remember which one had had a, you mentioned a gap around 50 55 dollar it's too many it's like a transitional period look how many candles look how high it went with no trading of that zone so and, and it went from trading the 60 level 60 64 to now 75 area and although it's consolidated up there for a while, I, I'm not compelled to buy it, even though it's a strong stock. It's a weak market. So if the market's correct, it's going to come down too, maybe less so than the other ones. But uh, it's not a crazy level if somebody's holding it, but it's not attractive for me to chase it up here. Billabong is saying in the chat that GoPro has to come up with something else, like another product, or the stock price is going to continue to decline. I was asking my neighbor who follows this company very closely, too. He's got all these GoPros, and I was asking what he thinks about it, too. He thinks at a certain point in time, you know, the stock is cheap enough, but he says the competitors, there's so much competition. Everybody's got the knockoffs on it right now that that's why you're really seeing the stock go down. And it, it's scary when everybody can produce something, you know, similar for a lot cheaper price, this is what happens here. And the competition is eating GoPro's lunch here right now. And I guess if they can come out with a better camera that can't get replicated, you know, maybe the stock can find a bid here again. But I don't know. Until that, I don't, I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's so much of competition as uh, over-exuberance in the story that got well, that too. In, in the short. I mean, people were following it like mad. And I was like, yeah. whoa, it's a camera company, people. I mean, it, it, it's not uh, revolutionary yet, and they're selling the story um, down the line. And I remember I said, well, there are other stories that are here now, uh, like Google was selling at the time or something like that. So it, it, it was crazy the way people chased it. Uh, it could have paid had somebody stepped up and bought it, but uh, they didn't. So, uh, I used to saying that the other cameras suck. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Nick, we were conducting yeah. a survey here at Benzinga. Are you going to buy an Apple Watch? I said I have something to say about that. I have never bought an Apple product for myself. It's not for me. The products are great. They're beautiful. Uh, they're just not for me. And and 
I would buy an Apple Watch for its apps. If it tells me, um, if it tells me, let's say I'm overexerting myself, if it's monitoring my heartbeat, my my pulse, my temperature, my uh, my, if it knows my medical history, and it says, wait a minute, you're getting up into the chances of a heart attack in the you know 30% range or 40% range, it tells me to dial it down. I will do it. If I had a medical condition where it helped me, that's why months ago, months ago, when they were talking about the next flying car from Apple. I said healthcare is an area that has tons of money now and has t- needs tons of improvement. It needs technology to come in here, uh, somebody revolutionary like Apple, and say, hey, I can fix this. I can improve this. Then I would buy it. In its current uh, version, no, I would not uh, because I don't even wear my nice watches now that I enjoy looking at, uh, let alone I'm not going to go out and spend 340 bucks on something that's going to be outdated in, in a year. Okay, well, let's talk about the chart of Apple here. And uh, I had talked to you, I had played those 128 puts at the end of last week, really based on a technical formation. And uh, I'm glad I covered a majority of them on Thursday because just after we got off the phone with Gene Monster, they get Mm -hmm. added to the Dow. And Mm -hmm. they got a nice, I was just scratching my head, and I ended up, wiggling out of them you know it's still there it was actually nick you want to talk about some crazy premium and this was probably because the market was selling off the 128 puts were out of the money it was trading 128 and a quarter and this is a weekly okay they were trading at 75 80 cents i couldn't yeah, believe nuts. it could you can that kind of premium uh but uh what do you think now obviously that 129.50 is a major you know major resistance level to me 125 looks a clear path to 120 what's your take on apple um i'm short it i have uh, naked puts on it i'm short it via i'm long naked puts on apple and it's not a huge position, but it's a position that will pay me handsomely without risking much. Every time it popped, I added to my short. And every time it dropped, I was in the money and I, and I trimmed a little bit. Uh, technically, it's, it, it's uh, hampered at 128 this week. There's nothing but resistance uh, above 128. Um, and it has some support on 125. And oddly enough, yesterday, uh, you know, Apple's had a couple of peaks. Uh, by peaks, like, like peekaboo peaks, not uh, peaks as highs. Uh, yesterday, 125.06, the low. What was that all about? Um, a, a few days ago, uh, overnight, 125.40 something. And the overnight, usually I don't pay attention to if there was that kind of action before or after. But there was none. Out of the blue, 125 something. Uh, it's not like a late settlement. I mean, there were a d- number of days before it was around that level. So I don't know what's going on with Apple. Um, I love the company. Its prospects long-term are great, um, but it's showing too much flexibility for a story that's so solid. It should be the slam dunk story. Why is it so flexible in price? Uh, I don't get it. So I'm, I'm short it via puts, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. So far, I'm even money on it, um, but I've booked a lot of profits along the way, so I kind of traded those puts back and forth like you did with your uh, – uh, one call uh, position that you had. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Google. Nice run here. Seems to be holding up a little bit uh, considering it got to that $500 level. Nice run after earnings. Uh, got anything going on in Google? I don't, but I did tell my uh, guys and gals to short it uh, because I had enough positions uh, around it. Um, but th- it was... Um, Last week, credit call spreads were issued, and um, they are making money on those. I also had some puts that I even bailed out of yesterday for a profit. I should have held them to today, but oh well. Uh, and it was a profit that I booked based on my uh, thesis. So uh, the put spreads uh, are still working as far as the debit, and the credit call spreads are also working. So the short position was done almost free. And just because it broke out from the 555 and – it kind of touched the ideal target from that breakout. And I thought to myself, and it, it, it's starting to look a little tired. Um, 590 may have been the, the highest it could have gone, but uh, if you short of your credit call spreads higher than that, you're, you're still okay. Okay. And uh, let's just take a look at some other issues. You said uh, you were playing the price line from the short side. Boy, a lot of room to get back in this stock. You just, you're just short the calls, right? So you'll just let that premium depend. Oh, you're talking about, oh, look at this level, 1200 here. Holy yeah, baby. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Who would look, like- at that, look at that gap. 
<laughs> price line yesterday, 1202 something, I think, was the low. It, and they've defended it. If it loses 1200 you know, it's one of those stocks that can lose 50, 60 bucks in a day without batting an eye. I collected $30 to sell this, the, the call. So um, I have a lot of potential profits baked in here. Oh, wow. Okay. You know what else I want to ask you about? Alibaba. Oh, my Lord. Double yeah. bottom at 80 and change. Uh, they let some top ranking uh, uh, division head go yesterday. Is this thing destined for a new old time lower and perhaps lower? You know, Alibaba is kind of like a, uh, a penalty box right now because uh, fundamentally, you know, the, the, the story, if they're lying or not, is kind of up in the air, although it's not really because it turns out so far, it looks like the way I understand it, the fraud is on behalf of the users. So it doesn't affect the P&L of Alibaba. And if this this becomes clear, I mean, I thought it became clear on that one candle about four days ago when it, it bounced to $86. So if you got it, you got in at 80 ish, and then uh, the the same day at 86, uh, you would book profit the next couple of days. Uh, so maybe that's just it. Um, but again, if I have time and I'm bullish Alibaba, I would buy calls way out in time or call spreads or uh, broken wings uh, that would allow me to participate in an upside uh, scenario. And I wouldn't be too scared about it. Uh, there is the uh, lockup coming up. Uh, this month, so that's also weighing down on it. But we saw with GoPro, it didn't translate the way people expect it to. I think it popped on the day of the lockup or something. I can't remember, but I remember that it was opposite of the thinking. So it, it's kind of like a lottery ticket at this point, even though it should be a fundamentally sound company. Also, want to ask you here, Nick, about Tesla. I know you follow this one. This stock has been quietly starting to drift down, and we are now dangerously approaching the lows from January here, just trading above there at 188. What are your thoughts here on Tesla? Oh, Tesla. Okay. Tesla was one of those things where we played perfectly. Um, it broke the, a line of support at 200. If, if you connected the most recent lows before these two candles, you get a line that would get you to 200 about. Um, and it, I said, if it loses that, if it doesn't bounce towards 220, which is the range it's been trading, um, then 185, 180 is is doable. Um, however, this is a well defended uh, level. So from here on out, uh, it all depends on markets. I think if the markets bounce, Tesla should bounce, unless it continues to have its own um, uh, negative headlines like this week. Now, if you look, it's got some complex head and shoulder uh, you know, it yep. looks like peaks and mountains that would tell you some you know nasty 140s area w w 150 area so there is a chance that if the market's correct or they don't, they don't find footing or all even even price, price, um, tesla all by itself if you pull up a two-year chart you can see two stages an area of trade that's centered around 230 and an area of trade that's centered around 150 ish so now maybe it's doing the tug of war between where it wants to trade, 150 or one uh, or 230 area. I I would like to hold puts into that. Uh, they're cheap. Uh, you you can set up for a little bit of money, a potential to double your money, or maybe a little more. It depends on what kind of setup you do. Uh, so it, it's worth the play on the short side, but it's also worth the play for somebody who's bullish the, the stock. I I don't really understand the story. I told you a while back that the, the factory is the biggest risk that's not priced into the stock because when he chose, Elon chose the location they went to, he literally mentioned he had one sentence around it that just raised all kinds of alerts in my head. He said, I chose this place even though I had places they offered me more money because these guys offered me, uh, assured me t completion time. And that's really important and that's going to cause a lot of problems if it doesn't happen. That's what I heard. Nobody else talked about it. And I said, this is a, a risk that's not priced into the stock, and that's why you shorted it at the time. Um, we've been on the line with Nick Shaheen. He's a market fine maven and author of Create Income with Option Spreads. He joins us every Tuesday morning to discuss this week's options outlook. Nick, thanks for joining us. Great education as always. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Talk to you later.